hello everyone. Today I will be presenting a paper named uh, Multimodal, Multimodal Multiscale Deep Learning for Large Scale Image Annotation. Um, it's an interesting paper, not too long, not too difficult, I think. So um, let's start. Um, to give you an outline of today's presentation, I will start by talking about the problems of image annotation and what image annotation actually is. After that, I will look at the proposed model in this paper that aims to solve these challenges of image annotation. And of course, we will look at the results as well. And I will briefly talk about the importance of image annotation and, and of this paper to conclude this um, presentation. So what actually is image annotation and, and how is it different from image classification? And the authors note uh, three main differences. Um, image annotation aims to describe instead of just merely recognize an image by annotating all visual concepts that appear in the image. So instead of just saying something like, um, if you look at this image, people or wine, when we talk about this image, we assign a different tag. So people, wine, kitchen, maybe cutting block, vegetables, etc. So image annotation is, is multi-label, multi-class classification. That's the first difference of image annotation compared to classification. And a second difference is that the image annotation involves a variable number of, of labels. And the data sets used for image annotation are mostly data sets with user annotated text. So not every image has the same number of labels. And this makes sense as well, of course. And some images are very basic and you can describe the image with just uh, one or two words. But in other images, there might be a lot going on there. Um, so you need a lot more words to describe the image um, accurately. And then a third um, important difference is, is that the concept that um, describe an image stretches a wide variety of concepts. Some more abstract and some, some more are uh, very concrete. Um, we could describe this image as, for example, people or food, pretty abstract. But we could also say tomatoes, and cutting block, wine, and go into much more detail. And image annotation needs to deal with these wide range of uh, concepts. Um, and these differences cause uh, two main issues when we are trying to do image annotation. The first one is that we need to assign multiple labels to one image. Um, and then the question is formally how to learn a rich feature representation suitable for predicting a diverse set of digital concepts ranging from object scene to abstract image uh, concepts. So the question is how to find all these different kind of things in the image instead of just one thing. And this is called the multi-label classification problem. And the second question is how to do how to annotate an image with the optimal number of class labels. And how do we know if you should assign an image just one or maybe two or maybe even five uh, labels? And um, that's uh, also an interesting problem and it's named the variable label number problem. So what has been done to tackle these problems? Um, most of the research is focused on solving multi-label multi classification problem. And we can see two lines of research here. The first line is focused on modeling the correlation uh, of different labels for a given image. So if you see a cutting block, it's pretty likely that there will be knife or vegetables in the image and that the cutting block is in the kitchen. So you can kind of model this correlation and get a little bit more information about what is likely to be in the image. And then the second line of research, they simply add a user provided text along with the image as model uh, input. Users did provide additional information about an image. And of course, that is very helpful when you want to do uh, or want to know what an image is about. So these are the main two lines, uh, the two main lines of research. And the problem with um, these kinds of research is that they ignore the second challenge I mentioned, the variable labor number problem. So although these steps are, are these are steps in the right direction, they ignore an important problem. So they are suboptimal. And more recently, um, people have been focusing on the variable labor number problem. And, and they did this by treating the image annotation problem as an image to text problem. You encode the image using a CNN, you feed the encoded image to an RNN, and that RNN outputs the uh, label sequence. And this way you can automatically determine the length of a label sequence, but um, the training labels are order or orderless, and an RNN, of course, requires an order. So what people did is they introduced an artificial order based on, for example, the frequency to solve this issue. Um, but this is also kind of suboptimal because you introduce an order that is not really there um, or isn't really important and doesn't exist. And that's why the authors say again, good effort, thank you, but this is a suboptimal solution. Um, and then the authors even include another uh, important problem. 
or not a limitation of the current line of research. Um, we saw that the image uh, annotation has that the image annotation has three main differences compared to uh, image classification. The first two differences are sort of tackled in existing research papers, but the third one is not. Uh, no one cared about the wide range of concepts that should be included uh, in image annotation. And the question is why is that? Um, the existing models to do image annotation abstract uh, abstract features just from the final layer of the CNN. And if you know something about convolutional neural networks, you know that the final layers contain much more detailed information about uh, the image. So whereas the first layer may just be about the color or a shape, the final layers can potentially recognize a type of dog or specific kinds of eyes, etc. So if you only abstract and use the final layer output, you will not be able to uh, get and use the more basic concepts of the image. So this is an important limitation of the existing lines of research um, related to image annotation. And to give you an example of what this limitation looks like, um, here's an image and the final layers of an image of, of, of a convolutional neural network may describe this as a cow or horns or clouds. Um, but a perfectly fine way, of course, to describe this image as well is just by saying something like blue, uh, green, uh, maybe horizontal line even. So the idea is that you could use these bottom layers as well to describe an image and to add a different level of, um, uh, of, uh, of abstraction. And that's, this is what the authors um, um, do uh, in this paper. Here's the proposed model. Um, it may look uh, somewhat difficult, but just consists of four uh, separate parts. And each one is not um, too complicated. I will talk about each part in detail, but um, let's quickly describe um, each part first. At the top left, you see here the CNN, where they do the visual feature learning, so abstracting the concept from the image. At the bottom left here, you see the um, textual feature learning using the noisy provided um, user provided text as input um, to get an idea what the image is about. And the outputs of these two networks are then combined and then used as input for two additional networks. The first one just does the multi-class classification. And the second outputs the number of labels that should be used to describe the image. And then, of course, when you have these two uh, things, so a number of labels and the, the number of the optimal number of labels, you can combine them uh, and you have uh, your final annotations. So four main parts. Um, let's talk about each one in a little bit more detail. This is the uh, CNN, so the visual feature learning part. Um, it's partly just a regular CNN, as you see here in the middle. Um, but at different stages of that CNN, the authors uh, take the output of a layer and use it in a separate a short network. And these are the red arrows that you see here. And this way, they can use that information that is in the bottom layer or in a more bottom layer, hidden layer, middle layer, whatever, um, and, and avoid this information is going through all the layers and, and gets more detailed, uh, get, gets more detailed at each step of the CNN. Of the CNN. Um, and they simply use this information in a separate uh, CNN branch, a future fusion branch, feature fusion branch, as it's called. Um, and this feature fusion branch combines the features of the CNN and puts it through convolution, a batch norm and a ReLU, and does this twice. So M1 here uh, is the feature information of a layer, and you can see that it goes to, through, uh, through two confs, uh, batch norms and a ReLU. So this way the authors are able to effectively use information hidden in bottom layers by extracting it from the CNN and using it in a separate uh, branch. And the size of these uh, convolution makes sure that the information per part of the CNN can be used and combined without having a large number of uh, parameters. Maybe somewhat abstract or difficult, but uh, this is the way to do it. And, and the main thing is that they use that this way they can use the bottom layer uh, features in from feature information. Um, what you see here is the textual feature learning part. So that is, let me see this part here. Uh, on the bottom left there, um, but it just rotated it 90 degrees. The input here is a binary factor of all inputs of each image with a value of one if the image is annotated with a tag. 
And this vector is encoded using two hidden layers and a value to get a dense textual feature vector. And the output is then forced to have the same size um, as the uh, fusion CNN output, so the previous model we described, um, to give both equal importance. Nothing uh, too weird going on here, just encoding the input using two layers where you force the output to be of a certain size. So we now discuss the left side of this flowchart here. Um, the output of the multiscale CNN and uh, the output of the textual feature learning uh, network are combined. Um, and use this input for the two other models to get the final annotation. Um, apparently the user provided inputs um, are very important and that's why they give it the same size and this importance as the output of the multiscale uh, CNN. You could wonder why they did this. Um, if the author, authors try to use uh, the features of the bottom features of the bottom layers of the CNN more efficiently, um, you could also give the output of the CNN a bigger size um, compared to the output of the textual uh, feature learning network. The authors did not decide to do that, so I guess um, that's just because the user provided text are just very helpful. Here are the two final parts of the network. The first one is just a fully connected layer plus a sigmoid function to get the number of um, to get a number of annotations. There's so a few annotations, and the second one consists of uh, two fully connected layers with a dropout of 0.5, so pretty high to avoid overfitting. And, and this network, um, this second network, can give you the optimal number of labels for a specific image. So the question that this network tries to answer is how many. And whereas the other, other one tries to answer the question, what is in the image? What is the image about? And then this way you get your final outcome. You take the uh, top n number of labels and you have an annotated image. So to summarize the most important parts of this model, um, use the lower level layer features as well, using a multi-scale CNN. And code user provided text and combine the outcome of the multi scale CNN with these uh, encoded outcomes or encoded user provided text. And then use this new combination to predict the number of annotations and the actual annotations. Um, one funny thing is that the authors know that everything is trained separately. So you can imagine that they just have four different no Jupyter notebooks uh, for each part of the network to get a final annotation. Um, and they say themselves, they say, our model has an overcomplicated architecture, which is uh, kind of true, just a lot of separate parts. Um, but on the other hand, the results are pretty good. Let's have a look at the results. Uh, this proposed model achieves a state of the art for image annotation on a number of metrics. And CP here is the um, precision pair class, and CR the recall pair class per class. And both are computed by taking the mean precision and recall over all classes. And you can see that this model um, does pretty well on, uh, on these kind of metrics. And the IP and IR, so here, um, are the overall per image precision and recall. So a little bit more detailed, uh, just per image. And this is computed by averaging overall test images. So uh, yeah, pretty good results. What does this mean to get uh, good results on image annotation? Um, it means that you have a more accurate annotation, of course, of an image. So here's the text in black is the ground truth. In green, you can see the predicted labels that are also part of the ground truth labels. And in blue, um, you see the extra labels that are also accurate, uh, but not included in the ground truth. So just by looking at these images, you can kind of see that the, uh, the model does better even than the, than the ground truth. So for example, if you look at this image uh, here, where it just says animal, uh, grass and horses and sky is also a perfectly fine way to describe this image. So uh, great results uh, with the use of this model. Um, yeah, just to, to, to conclude this presentation, I see that I didn't take that much time to, to describe everything, but it doesn't really matter. I think you, you get the basic sense of this, uh, this, this model. And why is image annotation important? And, and why is it great that these authors um, improve the state of the art? Um, recently, Facebook had an outage and the image didn't 
show up or at least didn't show at a lot of uh, at a lot of, lot of pages and suddenly people started tweeting and saying that what they thought they uh, did see were image annotations instead of just images uh, and some people complained and then said yes facebook is spying on me and then trying to see what what kind of uh, uh, images i am I'm, I'm uploading um, but of course this is very helpful for visually impaired people uh, you can kind of get an idea what is an image just with these uh, annotations. So that's, uh, that's a very helpful way uh, and a very, well, very good use case of image annotation. Um, this is it. Thank you very much. Um, this was the presentation. Um, if anyone has any, any questions or likes to discuss a few things in more detail, uh, now is the time to do that. <laughs>